Hi everybody, this is gonna be our internal training course for the Okidata 711 printer and also the Forever, both FlexSoft and Laser Dark Material. What I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take you through some of the steps um, and then we're gonna actively print both materials and I'm going to apply them so you see how the entire process works from start to finish. To get started, you're gonna need a couple of different tools when you're doing your demo. You're gonna need a good sharp pair of scissors because there is some trimming involved in some of this. You're also going to need the timer that comes with the Swingman press. So whether you get the heat press that is 15 by 15 like this, or you end up with a 16 by 20 in your shop, you're still gonna need um, a, a timer itself so you can time the actual pressing. The other thing that you're gonna need too is you're obviously going to need your FlexSoft color cheats, and you're also going to need some of the um, white toner material from OK as well. The other piece that you're gonna need is you're either gonna need a three mil PVC piece like this that is cut to eight and a half by 11, or you're gonna need about 10 sheets of eight and a half um, by 11 white paper that you put into the Oki. And what this does is it raises the transparency up so that the grip roller that's underneath here grips the material and feeds it through properly. So to get started, what you're going to need is you're gonna need a print file. So what Fabian and Wissam have done is given us a couple of different images that we've tested and they work really well with both materials so you get an idea of what things look like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you how you adjust the settings to make sure that you get optimal output on the Oki. Okay? So we'll get started with the actual image itself. So the first image that we're gonna be using is um, obviously here it's just black. So what's happening is even though the Oki printer does not have black ink, it's going to build the black ink by using the cyan, the yellow, and the magenta. So what we've got is we've got a bunch of images that are put up, so we're gonna be printing an entire sheet of them here. Now what I have to do is I have to go into the driver and I have to change the actual print driver for the Oki to optimize my output. So I'm gonna go into print and I'm going to choose my Oki 711 printer. Now what I'm, do, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go into the properties. Once I go into the properties, a couple of different things here I need to choose. First and foremost, we're always going to be using the multi-purpose tray, so I'm gonna change it to that. I'm gonna leave the job printing in color because again, even though I'm printing black, it's a build of C, M, and Y. I'm going to go into the job options and I'm gonna adjust this to fine detail make sure my copy is one, and make sure here it says mirror print because I'm printing this upside down. The other thing I want to do is I want to go into the color and I want to make sure that it says color print and that my white is turned off. And this is important to make sure you don't end up with a white flood behind your image. When I go into paper quality, paper quality I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna go down to advanced in advance, I'm gonna change a number of different things listed under printer features. So under media check, I'm gonna turn that to off. I'm gonna take the media type and switch it to films. We have tried a couple of the other ones and they do not work, so please ensure that you're always choosing film. I'm gonna change the multi-purpose trait to, is handled as a manual feed to yes. And I'm gonna take the tray switch and I'm gonna turn this off. And I'm turning this off to make sure if there's a misfeed in the multi-purpose, I can just hit the online button again and it's not gonna end up feeding eight and a half by 11 white paper from the take-up tray. So I'm gonna say okay, and I'm gonna say okay here. My image is now ready to print, so I'm going to hit, I'm going to take a piece of the FlexSoft material. So this is actually a purple metallic. I'm gonna load this so the matte side is up, lay it on top of my PVC sheet, open them up a bit so it's open in here, line it up, and I'm gonna hit the blue button here on the side of the multi-purpose tray, which pops the sheet up, and you'll hear a click, and gets the sheet ready and prepared to go. So, it's going to actually rip your file. So I'm going to now hit, it says install paper, so now I'm gonna hit the online button and the online button is going to activate the printer, get the data through it, and it's going to feed the sheet into the printer itself. Now you'll notice that as this feeds through, the print is not coming out at the top of the printer. And that's because we've got the multi-purpose multi tray open in the front, and we also have it open in the back. So my print is going to come out of the back of my printer, and it's gonna look like this. So this is the front of the sheet. You'll notice you see no print there. This is the printed image. 
what I'm going to do now is I'm now going to go into the actual file and I'm going to add the adhesive to the back of the print. So this white sheet that I'm going to put this on top of is both the adhesive and it's also an additional opacity layer that's going to get added everywhere that I have black toner on my foil sheet. I'm going to line this up on my press. I'm going to take the Forever B sheet, which always goes along with every pressing because every press requires a piece of adhesive on the back of it. I'm going to line these guys up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a piece of the finished, the matte finishing paper over top. And this could actually just be parchment paper. It can be a sheet of eight and a half by 11 white bond. As long as it's covering the print, we're projecting a little bit of the heat. I'm going to position the swing press over top. And I'm going to make sure that my press is set to about 305 degrees. Now my initial press to get the adhesive onto the back of the print is going to be a minute and 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to pop it down, nice firm pressure, and I'm going to hit start, and we're going to wait for the minute and 20 seconds. So my minute and 20 seconds is over. Stop the timer, pop the press. Now this is one of the most important steps because I want to make sure that when I'm peeling this adhesive sheet off, and be very careful because this is hot, you do want to peel this as hot as possible. You'll notice that I'm going to peel very slowly in about 180 degree direction away from the print. So I'm not pulling straight up, I'm pulling away from the print very slowly to make sure I don't pull too quickly, but I'm doing this on top of the platen to make sure that the press actually stays hot. So once I've peeled the adhesive sheet away, it's going to look like this. So you remember the very first time before we put it in, all of this was black. And now the actual eagles are white. This is now where your scissors come in. So I can actually take this, I don't have to wait. And now what I can do is I do have a little bit of extra adhesive transfer down here at the bottom and also at the top. If I was going to press this entire sheet right now, I'd only trim the bottom and the top of the press. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply one of the eagles to my garment. So I'm going to trim around my image. Really just giving a little bit of room and I'm gonna leave a little tag here at the bottom and that's for where I'm gonna start to actually peel the image off of the garment itself when I'm ready to go. So I've got, we don't actually have a t-shirt so I've got my my canvas bag that we're using for testing purposes today. I'm going to take the image itself, position it face down on the bag where I want it to go. And once again, I'm going to put the protective paper over top uh, of the print. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust my, I'm going to adjust this and I'm going to set it, sorry to 30 seconds. You could also do this on, on your cell phone if you've got a timer built into the cell phone. Set it to 30 seconds, position everything over top, and now I'm gonna press again for 30 seconds. Pop this down, nice firm pressure one more time, hit go, and now we're gonna wait the 30 seconds while it transfers the material onto the bag itself. So, my 30 seconds is up. I'm gonna pop, turn off my timer, peel the per paper away, and now the second most important part is to make sure that this itself cools down completely before I take the image off of the bag. So you can move it off to a surface. Um, if you take a look at the Forever video, they actually take an extra piece of any type of textile and they sort of rub it over top of the surface of the print to sort of help cool, help, uh, cool it down faster. So I'll do that now, my extra bag. So once this is completely cool to the touch, I'm then gonna peel it away. Now this is the most important point in the entire process. If you remember from the image, this eagle has a lot of really fine lines to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift up that extra little piece that I left. And you notice I'm just gonna take two fingers and I'm gonna roll very slowly away from the printed image. And I'm rolling it almost completely on top of itself, very slowly. And you can hear sort of a crackling as this peels away from the material.
there we go, I'm ready to go. So my image is now on my bag. Now, you'll notice that the first pressing actually has a little bit of a raised feel to it when you touch it with your fingers. It's also really, really shiny. It's also extra shiny because this is a metallic. If you want to take this down and you want to get a better washability out of the print itself, you're going to take the same piece of paper, we're going to lay it over top of the print itself, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mattify the actual print. So I'm going to pop this down again for an additional 30 seconds. This is, of course, an optional step. The customer does not need to do this, but the second pressing um, basically puts everything back down into the textile itself and is going to improve the washability when this is ready to go at the end of it. So average washability on this type of material, once it's been pressed for the second time, is anywhere between 40 to 60 washes on something like this that has very fine line where it's not a large solid. You're always gonna wanna wash with cool water with a low surfactant detergent, and you're always gonna wash things inside out. Again, I'm gonna turn that off, take away the paper, and then when I show you this the second time, you'll note that it's not half as shiny as it was the very first time, but it definitely does have that metallic quality. So that is the process for FlexSoft. What I'm gonna take you through now is the process for the laser dark. So now I'm gonna show you the print process for the laser dark. This is very similar in the finishing process. The only thing that's different here is how I position the file when I go into the print driver. So once again, I've got my, uh, my Luigi's up on my screen, which is our test image, full color. And I'm going to go into the Oki. And I'm, once again, I'm gonna go into properties. So a couple important things here. Again, I wanna make sure it's on multi-purpose tray. I wanna make sure it's set to color. Um, I'm gonna go into advanced. I'm gonna make sure that my media check is off, it's set to film, my multi-purpose tray is um, handled as a manual feed is turned to yes, my tray is off, so all this is still good. My job options, here I'm gonna make sure that it's mirror printed, I've got my fine detail. The most important step here is gonna be in color. In color, we wanna make sure that when I print this, that the white is turned to on. And what this is going to do is this is going to take all of the negative voids that are in the image and fill that with white toner. So I'm ready to go. So I've got my sheet of laser dark, which is the clear transparency loaded matte side up in the Oki. When I'm ready, once it's on top of the sheet, I'm going to push the blue button. It's going to pop that up and I'm going to hit print. Once again, the file is going to go into the rip that's embedded in the Oki driver, and it's going, I'm gonna hit the online button. It's gonna say the data is present, and it's gonna to start to feed the sheet into the printer. Once again, because I'm using multi-purpose trays, I've got it open in the front, and it's also open in the back, so it's not gonna come out at the top of the printer. And my sheet comes out, and it's gonna look like this. So you notice that the print from the front is considerably more vibrant than what the print looks like in the back. And the reason for this is this printer actually puts the white down last on top of the image. However, this isn't the only white layer. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna proceed to the Hicks and I'm gonna add more opacity to this entire print by putting the adhesive sheet onto the back of the print. So as I did the first time, I'm gonna put the image onto the press I'm going to position the B sheet so that the forever logo is facing up over top of the image. And you'll notice here too that the adhesive sheet is always slightly smaller on the edges than what the print sheet would be or what the laser dark sheet would be. I'm going to position my paper over top. Got my minute and 20 seconds ready on my timer. Same process here that we're doing for FlexSoft is for laser dark. I'm now going to push and hit my timer. And again, we'll wait the 120 seconds. So my time is up. Again, very similar to how I peeled the flex soft. This has to be done hot. The hotter, actually, the better the result. Again, I'm going to peel the adhesive very slowly away from the print while it's still on the heat press platen to make sure that this piece is nice and hot. 
as I'm peeling it away. Okay, and now you'll notice as an example that the back of the Luigi's are a lot whiter than what they were before. So very vibrant from the front and pretty white from the back. Now, same thing, we're going to take our scissors because I'm only applying one. There is a little bit of adhesive residue in the areas where I had no print. So I'm going to trim around my Luigi so I can pop them on top of my bag. And again, I'm going to leave a little bit of an extra tab for me to pull when I'm ready to take the image off the garment. So again, we're going to use my bag, my sample bag, and I'm going to position my Luigi where I want him to go. And take my multi-purpose paper. I'm going to reset my timer to 30 seconds. Okay, everything's ready. Pop this over top and you'll notice I'm not changing the temperature for any of these pressings. It's all just dwell time and I'm also not changing the pressure. So the pressure on this, as you can tell, is fairly robust. You need to have really good pressure for the adhesive to transfer properly onto the toner. The adhesive is only going to stick everywhere that you have toner. Where it's not, you will not get any adhesive in there. So I'll wait my 30 seconds. Time is up. Pop. And just like with the Flex Soft material, I want this to be cold when I peel it. The colder the temperature of the garment, the better the actual release result will be. So again, I'm going to take my extra bag here just to help cool it down. I'm going to push it over top. Either that or you could just let it sit, put it to a side. My hands are cold, so it's going to help cool down the image. Okay. So very similar to how I did the flex off material, I'm going to take this and I'm going to very slowly peel it away in a rolling motion away from my Luigi. And then when I'm done, my clear film is there. Now this is my final press and you'll notice how shiny he is. So if I want the end result to be this shiny, I can leave this, but if I want to mat it down, what I can do is just like I did before with the flex off material, I can put him back onto the heat press along with the paper, throw it over top and press it down again for 30 seconds. After a while, once you get used to doing this, you might not necessarily need to activate the timer for the 30 second press for the second. Um, but it is really important when you're doing the adhesive transfer to make sure you leave it in there for a minimum for a minute and 20 seconds um, to make sure that you're getting optimal transfer of the adhesive onto the back of the toner. So we're almost ready to go. I'm going to take my paper off of my bag, peel it off really nice and quick. And there is my finished result. Bag's hot. Ooh, there's my finished result. But you'll notice that the shine is nowhere near as much as it was in the very beginning.